Clearance is an important part in the prescription of hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. We shall go through some mathematical calculations for clearance in the context of hemodialysis in this series. What is clearance? The original definition is here, but to phrase it more clearly, it is the volume of blood that is completely cleared of urea per unit time, and this is in mils per minute. And this is of course a hypothetical value derived for the measurement of kidney function, because the blood is never completely cleared of urea. This is an illustration of clearance. For example, if we put 1 mg of substance X in 100 mils of plasma, this will give us a concentration of 10 mg per liter. And let's say 0.6 mg appears in the urine. In actual fact, the patient would have 0.4 mg left in 100 mils, and that would be 4 mg per liter. But in clearance concept, we would say that 60 mils of the blood is completely cleared of substance X, while 40 mils is uncleared, remaining at the same concentration. And this is a hypothetical volume. So in this case, the clearance of substance X would be 60 mils. And if this occurred over one minute, then the clearance would be 60 mils per minute. And now we perform some mathematical derivations of clearance. Assuming that the amount cleared from the blood is equal to the amount cleared in the urine by the law of conservation of mass, the amount cleared from the blood is the volume of blood cleared multiplied by the concentration of the substance in a plasma. The amount cleared in the urine is the concentration in the urine and the volume of urine. And on both sides of the equation, we divide it by time. And the volume of blood cleared per unit time is K clearance. And the volume of urine per unit time is defined as the urine flow rate. So if you re-express it, K will be equals to the concentration of X in urine multiplied by the urine flow rate and divided by the plasma concentration of P. So usually we use urea as the marker, and so the clearance of urea will give us this formula U times V over P. In steady state conditions, this formula will work. And often we will use a timed collection. Let's say we want to look at the creatinine clearance and this will require a collection over a period of time and we measure the concentration of the substance in the urine, the volume of urine collected divided by the duration of the collection. And of course, we will also need to measure the plasma concentration of the substance. So this is the formula for a timed collection uh, looking at the clearance of a particular substance. In non-steady state conditions, for example, in hemodialysis, you will see a fall in the plasma concentration of the substance across time. So in order to calculate the clearance, let's say of urea, we will have to find the amount of urea in dialysate divided by the area under the curve of the plasma concentration. For the amount of uh, substance X in the dialysate, we just need to measure the concentration in the dialysate multiplied by the total dialysate volume. As for the area under, under the curve, we will need to take multiple measurements of the plasma, find the average plasma and multiply by the time that is taken. And so this is a basic formula for clearance of a substance through dialysis, but you can imagine it is quite difficult to carry out because you will have to collect all the dialysates and measure the concentration of the substance, and you will need to take multiple plasma samples in order to calculate the area under the curve. So other methods have been derived to try to calculate clearance in dialysis. While K was developed for the measurement of a renal function, 
The KT of a V was developed for measurement of clearance in dialysis, and this KT of a V concept was popularized by Gotch and Sargent in 1985. KT of a V is dimensionless, with K as the clearance in mils per minute multiplied by T, the dialysis session length, and divided by V, which is the volume of distribution of urea. Single pool models were usually applied and this is termed as single pool KT over V, in which we regard mathematically the patient as a single pool of fluid. To reduce the complexity of calculation of KT over V, we use the urea reduction ratio. And this is calculated by the difference in the pre and post urea divided by the pre dialysis urea. And sometimes the formula is expressed in this manner. And what is the mathematical relationship between urea reduction ratio and KT over V? And this is demonstrated in this experimental setup using a single pool model in which we assume the patient to be a single compartment of fluid. As dialysis occurs, urea concentration falls exponentially. This means that the KT over V has a very simple natural log relationship with their urea reduction ratio. And therefore, the simplest formula for KT over V, it is equals to negative ln 1 minus urea reduction ratio. This simple formula of negative ln 1 minus URR does not take into account urea generation while the dialysis is ongoing and also additional clearance from ultrafiltration so in 1993, Dogadas proposed a further correction to the KT over V formula. You probably do not want to memorize this, but just know that it included an additional adjustment for G, which is the urea generation rate, and an additional adjustment for any volume reduction. When expressed graphically, this is the relationship of urea reduction ratio and the KT over V. As the urea reduction ratio increases, KT over V increases exponentially. With the additional effect of clearance from ultrafiltration, the same urea reduction ratio will give us a slightly higher KT over V. In clinical use, how does KT over V compare with the urea reduction ratio? Both are mathematically related to each other, and in fact, KT over V can be calculated from URR. If you use the Dogadas formula, the KT over V can take into account additional factors such as urea generation during dialysis and extra removal along with ultrafiltration. But the studies have shown that there is no difference in mortality whether or not you target delivered dose by KT over V or by urea reduction ratio. For the sake of completeness, if you carry out dialysis in different frequencies between two to seven times a week, you may wish to use this formula that is shown here. Another way of calculating or presenting the KT over V is the equilibrated KT over V or E KT over V. We know that using the single pool model, it overestimates the amount of urea removal because the urea is measured right at the end of dialysis. Following the termination of dialysis, there is a rebound of the urea over the next one to two hours. And we know that it is this level of urea that the patient will have to live with at least until the next dialysis. So the dialysis or the post dialysis urea is measured 30 minutes after the termination of dialysis. It is however not popular due to inconvenience to the patient. Furthermore, the EKT over V is quite often simply 0.2 units lower than the single pool KT over V. It is also possible to estimate the equilibrator KT over V from the single pool KT over V by formula.
For the purpose of clinical studies, especially if you're comparing between different types of dialysis modality, you may have to calculate the standardized KT over V or the weekly KT over V. And this is the formula that is available here. And if you want to take into account residual renal function, the formula is presented here. This is not often used clinically, but usually in research study. A note on blood sampling for the purpose of calculating the KT over V. For the pre-dialysis sample, it should be taken before starting the midweek dialysis session. For the post-dialysis sample, we have two options. One is to slow the blood flow to 100 mL per minute for 15 seconds before taking the sample. This uh, slow blood flow is to ensure minimal excess recirculation and we wait for 15 seconds to make sure that the blood that we are interested in sampling has advanced to the sampling pot. Another option is to stop the dialysis for 3 minutes before sampling. Another way to estimate dialysis clearance is by using the online clearance monitoring function if it is available at the dialysis machine. The general principle of which is to look at the variance in conductivity. At the beginning of the test, two different dialysate inlet concentrations are given. The difference in conductivity between the dialysate inlet and the dialysate outlet is measured. The electrolyte dialysis is then calculated and this is used to estimate urea clearance. While we may not need to know the actual calculation of the online clearance, one important thing to note is that in order for you to perform the online clearance monitoring, we basically have to feed into machine the patient's total body water. Most machines would use the Watson formula in which you will need to key in the gender of the patient, the age, height, and weight. There are various other measures besides KT over V that you can use to measure dialysis clearance. One example is the solid removal index, which is the urea clear concentration in the dialysis multiplied by the volume of dialysis. There are various benefits that are listed here to the use of the solid removal index, but the main disadvantages of using the SRI and also all the other measures that have been proposed is that there have been few studies which correlated patient outcomes with these measures. In summary, clearance is defined as the volume of blood that is completely cleared of a substance per unit time. It is a hypothetical value and some of the common formula that are used to calculate the KT over V is listed over here. Thank you.